We got some songs this morning that um, the first song we're going to sing, it talks a little bit about how Jacob wrestled with the angels till he got his blessing. Uh, the next song we sing after that, it talks about sometimes you just got to go to war about them, some things. And then finally, you know, we just can't do anything without Jesus. Long as we got Jesus, right? Long as we got King Jesus. And so, uh, you know, as I'm looking at these songs all week, I, I, I come to a, a familiar scripture to me. It's one of my favorites, and it's about where King Jehoshaphat, and it's over in Second Chronicles chapter 20, and he realizes he's got three armies that's coming against his nation of Judah. And he's like, whoa, whoa, man, what am I going to do about this? We're way over, we're overpowered. We're, we're outnumbered. There's no way we can take on this, this army in this battle. And so he goes, God, what are we going to do? I can't figure this out. I, I just don't have enough people to do this. And so he gets all the people of Judah together, and they pray about it. And then the Levites come, and the Levites tell Jehoshaphat, said, hey, we got a word from God for you. He said, God said, this is his battle, not yours. You leave it up to me. Never fear. Don't be dismayed. I'll take care of this one for you. And uh, so Jehoshaphat does something that's really unique, and, and he gathers all his people together before they go out to, to battle. He gets the army together, and then he brings the singers in. You know what I'm talking about? He brings the singers in, and he sends the singers out ahead of the army. And as they start singing, all those three nations start doing battle amongst one another, and they destroy themselves. They never had to pull the first sword out. So what I'm telling you today is your song and your praise is your weapon. Okay? You got it? You tell that disease. You tell cancer, this battle's not mine. It belongs to God. You tell them that, hey, you tell your family, look, y'all can be all messed up if you want to. This is not my battle. It's God's. He's going to take care of it. Amen? You can tell that bill collector, hey, this battle's not mine. God's got this. He's going to take care of you. So if y'all are ready to sing this morning, we're ready to sing. We're ready to have some church. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you so much, Lord. We just pray for your presence here, God. Come down and just, we're begging you, Lord. Come down and overwhelm us today. Fill us up, Lord, so much so that it just spills out over on the floor. It comes down the steps and it travels up into these chairs. And God, these people here in this congregation will be filled this morning, Lord God. We're just begging you. We're asking you, come, Lord God. We need to turn this battle over to you, Lord God. Whatever it is we're going through this morning, God, I just pray that you would take it this morning. Lord, we just love you, and it's in the name of Jesus. Let's sing, y'all.
go till it bless my soul. I'm a witness. Blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I 
tell you what, somebody's getting a blessing this morning. Y'all ready to have church? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on now. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. God is good to us. Listen, man, why do I got to take that slow laugh around back? <laughs> I got to start some trouble. Y'all need to hurry up. Acts chapter number 27. Why? I don't know. Just cause, I reckon. Yeah, it's on page 243 in my Bible. <laughs> anyway, yours will be close. What's yours? Thirteen ninety. Oh, see, mine starts over in the New Testament. <laughs> Hallelujah, man! Sometimes you just preach because that's where you're gonna preach, and because that's where you're gonna preach. 
Amen. It's been a week anyway. Um, Acts 27. Acts 27. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners, one named Julius, a centurion of the Augustus band, and entering to a ship of Adramitum, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Artichus, and a Macedonia of Thessalonica being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius uh, courteously enter, entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Even in captivity, amen, he's on his way to Rome. He's been bound. There's been prophecy given, amen, by Agabus. And Agabus said that the man's robe would be, uh, he would be, uh, uh, tied, he tied himself up in it, said he would be tied up and taken into Rome. So that was the destination that Paul was going to get, uh, be taken to by prophecy, amen. God, amen, sometimes gives us that assurance, amen, before we enter into the storm, amen, that he will keep us in the storm. God ain't never brought you to something that he is not able to bring you through. If God brings you to it, he can bring you through it, amen. He, he is God, amen. But uh, it's amazing how God kind of gives you a refreshing, amen, sometimes before you enter into a hard place. And when he had launched from thence, we sailed into Cyprus because the winds were contrary, amen. I'm going to tell you, sometimes the winds go blow contrary to you. Uh, it gets hard in your life. Life is not always easy, amen. Uh, and when he had launched, he sailed over to sea into Sicily and Pamphylia, and we came to Myra in the city of Lycia. And, uh, and there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing to Italy, and he put us in there. When we had sailed slowly many days and scarce were come over against Sindas, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete almost to Salomon, and hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens where unto the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent and the sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them. When he's talking about the, uh, the fast was already past, uh, amen. This is a time of year. It's uh, late September, maybe uh, early October is whenever they're making this sale right here um and uh they had been fasting uh, uh you can look on your calendar because we're in that time of year they're they're fasting because of yom kippur yom kippur that's why they're fasting uh the day of atonement maybe yom kippur the day of atonement that's why they were fasting this is jewish tradition so they even done some of the traditional stuff uh, even though they were New Testament Christians, uh, they still fast for Yom Kippur. Uh, so you can, you can look that up anyway because we are in that time uh, of the year. Okay, let's, let me get back. For the fast was now already past. Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be much hurt and much damage, not only of the laden of the ship, but also of our lives. Amen. Paul, uh, he, um, he grew up, uh, Paul of Tarsus and uh, Saul of Tarsus. And he's, uh, he's familiar with the sea. He's familiar with things concerning the sea. They did a lot of sailing back then. But one thing he's really familiar with, I mean, is the God he serves. He's familiar with the life that he's been through. He's been stoned by his own countrymen. He's been left for dead. Uh, he's, he's been through many things even at this time. And uh, so, but he said, Nevertheless, the satyrian, believing the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Paul said there's going to be hurt, there's going to be damage. 
even to the laden of the ship or their cargo, and even also so to our lives. Amen. But see, Paul was not the shipmaster, but Paul was the man of God. And the man believed the shipmaster more than he did the man of God. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Amen. You know, there's many things that you could go with right there. Amen. Uh, I, I, I mean, I could just throw something in. Man, I will. I might as well. What the heck. You can believe a lie and be damned. <laughs> Amen. That's what Scripture says, all right? And Paul, being the man of God, he was talking to God. Amen. The other man was looking at the, the clouds and the, uh, uh, and the sea. And, and Jesus even talked about, you know how to read the, the clouds and the sky, but you don't know how to read the signs of the times. Amen. But Paul knew that God was working and God was doing things. Because the haven was not commodious to winter in, it was not accommodating or suitable for them to winter in. The more part advised to depart, so everybody kind of jumped on board with the shipmaster instead of jumping on board with Paul. Uh, it, it says, and the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phineas and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete and life toward the south, west and northwest and when the south wind blew softly amen supposing they had obtained their purpose amen let me tell you sometimes the devil sometimes he thinks he's going to get what he wants it's going to work out the way he wants it feels like it's going the way the devil wants amen but god's got something else amen god's got a, god's got a plan god's got a purpose amen sometimes we can't see the plan we can't see the purpose but god God has everything under control. They thought they had obtained their purpose. All of them that went with the shipmaster, all of them that agreed with them, didn't go with the man of God. Amen. They, supposing they had obtained their purpose, they loosed this and sailed to Crete. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eroclodon. Eroclodon is like a typhoon or a hurricane. <coughs> Amen. Just, amen, when the devil thinks he about to win, amen, God going to lose something on him. Amen. Just when the devil thinks you about to go under, God's going to lose something on him. Amen. God, amen, has all power in heaven and earth is in the precious name of Jesus. There ain't nothing happens outside of Jesus. All things were created by him and without him was not anything made that is made. Amen. He is the master of the universe. Amen. So there was a great storm. Amen. Could you imagine? Amen. That's why I picked this little thing. Could you imagine being out there on a ship? Amen. And a typhoon or a hurricane come. Man, I was in a house. Amen. Where I grew up over on the Mill Hill. I made a stupid decision one time and moved back to the neighborhood. That is never a good idea when you come from where I come from. And listen, it was 1989. Amen. And that that uh, Hugo came through. And you talking about some wind howling through some windows. Man woke us up in the middle of the night. I mean, I could, uh, that was tough enough being inside of a house. But could you imagine being on a ship where there's nothing stable around you? Amen. Sometimes you're going to go through storms in life and it's going to feel like nothing is stable around you. I mean, the man of God is in there with everybody else that chose to go another way than he did, and he's in the same instability of the storm as they are. The storm's no different for him. Amen. But when the ship was caught up and could not bear up in the wind, we let her drive. Amen. I kind of like that. Amen. Sometimes, amen, in life, it seems like things get so out of hand. I always I remember when we established the church and everything, uh, things happened and moved so fast. And I said it was like riding a horse and just throwing the reins loose and letting her go. Sometimes you just let her go. Amen. If God can't control it, can't nobody control it. If God ain't got hold of it, ain't nobody got hold of it. God's got hold of it. Amen. Whatever you're going through, God's got it. Amen. Amen. God's got it. We have to trust him. Trust him in whatever the circumstances. It, when it ain't, the just shall live by circumstances. The just shall live by sight, 
No, the just shall live by faith. It don't matter what the circumstance looks like. It don't matter what it looks like from your eye. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I can't see what God's doing. I can't feel what God's doing. But I know God's at work. Amen. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. He said he kept us all safe. Where at? Right there in the palm of his hand. Amen. Paul standing, amen, on the ship in the middle of the storm, and God still got him. Fear thou not, be not dismayed. I'm the Lord thy God. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's what God said. Amen. That's what God said. Amen. Sometimes you just got to let her go. Amen. And sometimes the hardest things in life are letting things go. Y'all know I want to preach different right there, don't you? I want to do that pile everything in my hands. God can't give you nothing when you're trying to hold on to everything. But when you let her go, amen, and hold your hands out to God, God can fill them up. But when we're trying to cling to everything, he can't give us nothing. Amen. Sometimes you just got to let her go. Somebody say, sometimes you got to let her go. <laughs> Amen. Y'all have to say that redneck like me because I don't have that proper speech. <laughs> Amen. Well, Amen. <laughs> Running uh, and running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, do you know what they did on this ship? He said we had much work to come by the boat. It said, and when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding, undergirding the ship. Amen. You, you know what he did, Ron? That ship. That's what they're hearing. I mean, the boards on it. Man, this thing's twisting in this storm. Amen. They dropped ropes down, run it up under the boat, and pulled it up on the other side. Amen. To tie the ship together. And that was the undergirdings. Amen. To secure it, to pull it together. Amen. That's exactly what they did. They, you know, sometimes you just got to gotta pull it together. Amen. Uh, somebody say, I'm going to take the word of God, and it don't matter what's going on my ship. I'm going to run me a rope, amen, under there, and I'm going to pull it back, and I'm going to tie it off. Amen. A boy told me one time, he said, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. Amen. <laughs> That's what they did. They pulled it up there and tied them a knot and said, boys, hang on. We're going to ride her out. Amen. <laughs> anyway, that's some Christian folks right there. Anyhow, let's go on. <laughs> and fearing least we should fall into the quicksand, we struck sail and so were driven. Amen. Fearing. Amen. That's what the enemy wants to happen to, to you and to me in trials and tribulations and circumstances in our life. Amen. But you know what the Christian does. Amen. The ship's creaking. It's creaking. Oh, amen. And you are trying to try trying to tie the rope around and hold it all together. Amen. And then the enemy sends a spirit of fear on you. Oh, but somebody say, but I know King Jesus. Amen. What you say in the middle of that is hold up. Wait a minute. I can't remember all that. Can you look? Hold up. Wait a minute. What? Put some Jesus jump in it. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that song? <laughs> hold on. Wait a minute. Put some Jesus jump in it. Amen. But listen, right in the middle of it, the ship's creaking. Amen. She, she, you think she's going to fly apart. Amen. You done throw a little bit of the Word of God around it. Amen. To hold on. Then the enemy comes and says, you can't make it. You ain't going to come through. Amen. You're going down. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And tries to bring fear on you. Amen. But you know what? Amen. An old boy, Christian boy going to say, amen, let me tell you something about my Jesus. He ain't gave me the spirit of fear, but he gave me the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to cling to Jesus. I'm going to hold on to Jesus. I'm not going to let go of Jesus. Amen. But the greatest of all is he's not going to let go of me and you. Amen. He ain't going to let go of us. Amen. He's got a hold of us. Amen. I'm glad I'm safe in his hands. 
Amen. Ain't you glad you don't got to depend on nobody else to make it to heaven? Amen. I like this. Amen. People will ridicule you and push you down. But you know what I found out? The way to heaven didn't go through their yard. Amen. Amen. I got a direct line to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, a name that's above every name, and his name ever kneel bow, and confess that your God and my God, he's king. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody tell the devil, I don't have to go through your yard to get to heaven. <laughs> Amen. I don't have to give your stamp of approval to get to heaven. I got the blood of Jesus. The one that walked up Golgotha's hill, laid down his life on Calvary's cross, took the crown of thorns, beat with the cat of nine tails. That's who I got on my side. He my daddy. He's my father in heaven. Amen. Uh, I want to say some more stuff, but I ain't. I'm, I'm going to just keep preaching a minute. Amen. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest the next day, we lighten the ship. Amen. Y'all know what that is. I know some of y'all did. Some of y'all heard me preach. Amen. Paul said, that much damage was going to come, uh, at verse 10, not only the laden of the ship, but also of our lives. Amen. So we were exceedingly tossed with the tempest, and we lightened the ship. The laden, or the cargo, well, they lightened the ship. Amen. So they, man, they had stuff they were hauling, amen, to be purchased and bought. Amen. They started chunking it over the side of the ship. Now, now, what does that mean to you and me? Start chunking stuff? Well, you get a crazy woman in your house, she will chunk some stuff. <laughs> Do what? Trying to save yourself and the house. That's exactly right. See, because the Scripture said... Cast off every weight and sin which doeth so easily beset you. It's holding you back. It's restricting you from being what God's called you to be. Amen. When you're in the middle of that storm, you grab hold of them things that's holding you back, that's hurting you, that's hindering you, yourself and your family, and you start chucking things. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get rid of some things. They, that's precious. Get rid of precious. Amen. Somebody's going to want that. Throw it away. Now, I would say, a redneck song, just give it away. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> it ain't worth fighting over. Amen. I know the song. Somebody said that don't fit. It, it, it does in my mind. I just see this is warped up here. <laughs> this thing, you know, it goes up and down and round and twists. It does all kind of stuff. You just can't even <laughs> control it. But anyway, amen. They lighten the ship. Amen. That's when the enemy wants to bring fear and frustration into your life. To make you think you can't make it. To make you think you ain't got it. <laughs> Amen. He wants to frustrate you. That's what the enemy wants to do. And the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Amen. Hold on, man. You're talking about the things we're going to raise. Them. When, when we do get the ship fixed, we're going to have to set sail again. And boy said, I ain't worried about setting sail. I'm worried about making it through the night. <laughs> Amen. They just started casting everything off. <laughs> Amen. The tackling, the things they raised up the banners with. Amen. To keep her afloat. <laughs> Amen. They started throwing them. Uh, Amen. To the side. Amen. I always like, see, everybody ain't like this. Amen. All I got to see is third day, and that just messes with me. Amen. That lets me know everything uh, <laughs> is going to be all right. <laughs> Why? Because the third day. Amen. <laughs> 
And somebody said, it's Friday. Yeah, but Sunday's coming. Amen. The third day, he's going to rise up out of the grave. Amen. Ain't no grave can hold him down. Amen. And that same spirit that raised Jesus up out of the grave, it lives and abides in you and me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Somebody, amen, the devil's got you thinking that it ain't never going to work out. It ain't never going to be good. Somebody tell the devil by the third day, amen, he got up and walked away. On the third day, he said, it is expedient for me to go away because if I don't go the way, the spirit will not come. But let me tell you something. Tell the devil the Holy Ghost doesn't come. He lives inside of me because of the third day. Amen. Sorry, I'm doing that Pentecostal thing today. Amen. But on the third day, amen, anytime you read about the third day, you just tell the devil he's alive and well. He's seated at the right hand of Father, interceding for you and me. Why? Because the third day, amen, the third day he got up and walked away. Amen. But the enemy wants to bring frustration into your life. Amen. And when neither sun nor star in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay upon us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Amen. Abandonment. Amen. You think they ain't no way to deliver. Amen. That's uh, the, the devil wants to get you in a dark place. Amen. The devil wants to bring depression on you. Amen. That's why they were in a dark place. Amen. And you get in a dark place, that's where it seems that all hope is lost. Amen. Oh, John said he was that light that shined in the darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Amen. You know why? Jesus left the splendors of glory. And was made a little lower than the angels and took on flesh like and bone like you and I. Amen. And the devil didn't know what he was doing. He thought if he nailed him to a cross, amen, that would be it. Amen. Because the light shined into darkness. Amen. And, and that was Jesus coming to earth. Amen. But the devil couldn't comprehend it. He thought if he killed him, it would be okay. But he didn't realize that the third day was coming. <laughs> he didn't realize that if he killed him, amen. Amen. By killing him, he would save you and me. It takes the blood of Jesus, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Amen. It takes the blood of Jesus. Amen. So the devil could, didn't comprehend the plan of God. Amen. Because God had a plan before the foundation of the world that he would save you and me. Amen. And the devil couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> I love that. Amen. <laughs> the mysteries of God. That's been hid since the, since the foundation of the world was revealed in Jesus Christ. Amen. At Calvary's cross. Amen. And on the third day, and the devil couldn't do nothing about it. <laughs> amen. That's why that angel, amen, stood there and say, sit down on the rock. Amen. At the tomb. And the Roman soldiers, amen, fell like dead men. He defied, amen, every devil in hell. Amen. Because he knew his Savior would arise on the third day. Amen. Okay. Just when it looked like all hope was lost, amen, there was a beam of light come down in the midst of that darkness. Amen. But after long abstinence, amen, somebody say, God going to shine a light. Amen. In the midst of my trouble, in the midst of my storm, in the midst of my battle, God's going to shine a light. Amen. He shone that light. But after long ashes, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and says, Sirs, ye have hearkened, uh, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. He said, And now, but there's a ray of light. <laughs> and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you, you in a battle, the ship's creaking. You got ropes pulled around it, tying it off. I'm talking about, 
Uh, if you was in a house in uh, 89, son, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. I've seen it go down through there and just cut the tops of them pine trees. I mean, you look down through the woods, and it'd be a mile down through there. They just cut the tops off of them. Amen. <laughs> hey, but, but listen, amen. But Paul, amen, he stands up right in the middle of the storm. The ship's rocking. Amen. They ain't seen light in many days. No stars. They've seen nothing. He said, be of good cheer. Amen. For there shall no be no loss of life, any man's life among you but of the ship. And there stood by me this night an angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. I don't care what body you're in. It don't matter what you go through. You got to understand who you are and who you serve. Amen. Somebody tell the devil, listen, my, my father can chastise me, but you can't chastise his child. You try to chastise my devil daddy's son or daughter my daddy gonna come after you amen you got to understand whose we are and who we serve amen, amen. amen. hallelujah he could be a good chair but a cheer because he understood whose he was and who he served amen and he said each and every one of you amen today can be of good cheer why because you're God's you belong to him, and he belongs to you. Amen. Saying, fear not, Paul. Amen. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Amen. Paul said, listen. Amen. You jump off that ship, you're going to die. You stay on the ship, and you're going to be safe. Amen. You know why us, we used to sing? I'm going to take a trip in a good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye. I'm going to tell you what. You and I might go through a lot of things, but stay on that ship. Jesus will never, ever fail you. I was young, and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor he is seed begging bread. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Amen. If I can just be a doorkeeper. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I'm glad I know Amen, whose I am and whom I serve. <clears throat> Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Amen, that's what I had. On. Amen. <laughs> I got faith in God. Amen. I have faith in God. Be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must cast upon a certain island. Amen. And when the 14th night was now come, and we were uh, driven up and down in Adria, uh, about midnight the shipmen deemed that the crew drew near to some country and sounded, amen, and found it 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it at 15 fathoms. Uh, fathoms and then fearing least we should have fallen upon the rocks they cast four anchors out of the stern amen and wished for the day amen they thought they had total failure is what they thought amen the enemy wants to bring fear frustration and make you think that you're a failure amen and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea, amen, then uh, under color, amen, as though they would have cast anchors out of the four ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers that set these abide in the ship, they was going to take the little ships that were on the side of the ship, throw them over, jump in the little ships, amen, and sail away. And who, like they did on the Titanic, and half of them froze out there in the sea because there were not enough little ships to accommodate everybody. It was the same on this ship that night. And Paul said, except they abide in the 
ship, ye cannot be saved. Brother, outside of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved other than the precious name of Jesus. Salvation is only name. Confucius couldn't do it. Buddha couldn't do it. Muhammad couldn't do it. It's only by Jesus that you can be saved. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Y'all know I, man. <laughs> 14 days. You know what the soldiers did? Verse 32, them little boats they was letting out. <laughs> soldiers cut the ropes. You know what happened in the middle of the storm? They realized they couldn't listen to the shipmaster no more. They had to listen to the man of God. <laughs> Paul told them, said, y'all going to die. If them boys set out in that boat, we all dying here today. <laughs> and them boys said, no, nah, we cutting ropes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they went ahead and cut the ropes and let them go. Let the boats go. And, and, and daylight was coming. Paul told them to take meat and eat. This was 14 days that you have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Yom Kippur, they fasted 14 days. Not because there wasn't food. They did it in obedience to God. They did it in sacrifice to God. They did it for the love of God. They did it for the life with God. Amen, that's exactly what they did. I pray you take some meat for, this is for your health. So, see, there was plenty to eat there the whole time. Amen. But in the middle of that storm, amen, they say, we're going to cling to God. We're going to get as close as we can, brother. They hold. Now, I'm going to tell you what. If you ain't never prayed, get in a good battle. You'll pray. Amen. I've often said, if God can't get your attention, he'll put you in a hospital and lay you on the back so all you can do is look up. God's going to get your attention. God's going to get people's attention. I would even speak further on that, but I'm not going to. He spoke. They took bread. Verse 36, he said, Then they were all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. <clears throat> we were in the ship. They, the souls that were in the ship were 200, three score, and 16. And when they had eaten enough, they lighted the ship and cast out to the sea. I was trying to get to a place right here. <clears throat> 40, and when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore. And falling upon the place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the fore part stuck fast. I just wanted to kind of get there. I'm going I'm to stop right there. Y'all can go ahead and come, Dale. And because through the years, I've often thought about them falling into a place where two seas met. The sh they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. They came to a place where two seas met. Don't you remember the day you come to God? I remember sitting at Thrift Baptist Church under the bell tower when I was 15 years old. I'd been serving God for a little while. The little church we went to was over in Lowell. People I partied with were at the bottom of the hill at a house. And I sat under that bell tower and I cried. At a place where two seas met. Amen. And you can choose to go one way and continue in that lifestyle. Or you can choose to go after God. Amen. And I'm so glad about the age of 24 
Amen. God, amen, I hung on to him. Amen. And he just drove that ship right into the ground. Amen. There. Amen. And it stuck. Amen. It said, amen, the four parts part stuck fast and remained unmovable amen ain't you glad when you serve god you can be steadfast unmovable always abounding amen in the love and the work of god amen it stuck fast amen listen oh lord have mercy amen been up i've been down amen been all around but still stuck in jesus amen listen what did it say? Amen. It said the hinder part was ripped off. Amen. I like that. You know what Paul said? Paul said, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing. I ain't made heaven yet, Bill, but I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Amen. He said, I count myself not to have apprehended but this one thing I got a hold of amen he said forgetting those things that behind me amen they got to be cut off you got to let them go you can't cling on to your past amen don't drag a dead man around amen give it to God get stuck in God hold on to God remain in that gospel ship amen he'll never leave you he'll never forsake you he'll be with you all the way to the end of this world amen today i advise you amen get stuck in jesus you want to come pray come pray get stuck in jesus he'll never fail you